Hey, my name is Brett Waller and I'm an artist. Um, I'm out here about to wrap up this how to build an egg project um, and I thought I'd do an introduction to um, the how to build an egg project series that I'm doing for you two um, at the end of the project. That's, that's me, do an intro at the end. Uh, anyway, I'm going to try to be changing the wire on my welder while I'm talking to you. But, um, I don't know, I do a lot of thinking when I'm out here working. Um, and I was thinking about the nature of making art for me and um, what artists do, really. You know, because artists aren't just trying to copy stuff they see in nature, uh, at least not me. Artists are trying to get to the reality of what that thing is, you know, what the thing is that they're working on. You know, it's a it's a it's a deeper reality than just copying nature. It's uh, creating nature, really. Um, that's why, as an artist, you know, you can draw or paint or be a sculptor or a singer or a poet. Um, it's your it's your personal description of the nature of the thing you're describing. And that's what's important. Um, so, oops. so I was thinking about it. What I was thinking was, um, I was thinking about me as a child. Um, I was about probably about six years old, and we had these phones. You know, we had a telephone, and I don't know if you're too young to. Uh, remember what a telephone looks like, but they used to plug into the wall and ring. Um, so, uh, and it looked funny, you know, it was this thing, it dialed, it had a handset, there was no voicemail, no answering machines, and you dialed the numbers and you talked to somebody. And so I understood the concept of that at six, you know. So, um, sometime around age six or seven, uh, they came out with a new phone. Like everybody had the same kind of phone. It all looked the same. It was, a, it was black, pretty much, had a handset, a dial you dialed, and you held the handset with your ear and your mouth there. And then they came out with these new phones, like in the 1970s sometime. And um, it was called the Princess Phone. And uh, it was this very beautiful, stylish little handset that sat in a cradle and it was very beautiful and streamlined and uh, it had buttons you push instead of a dial. And it was on the handset. And the buttons made a tone. And anyway, I was fascinated by this thing. Also because it was very beautiful. And I was fascinated because it did the same thing as the old thing. But it looked completely different. And I was fascinated by that because... You know, up till the age of like six years old, five or six, everything that was in my world that I got introduced to the first time, I just thought existed forever. Like, you know, my mother and my father and, um, you know, our house and all the things in it were all equal. The chair, a chair was as equal to the birds outside. I thought, you know, they're all created by God or whatever, some supreme being. And they all just existed forever. It was only when that, when that phone, when I, I discovered that new princess phone, that I said, wow, no, somebody invented this. Somebody made this. Somebody made it, somebody changed it. And, I, and conceptually, that was a big deal for me. You understand? Okay. Um, let me try this. So, so I don't have a princess phone, and I don't have a regular phone to show you, but let me try to describe it this way. Um, uh, this is the best I can do today. So, um, there's these two chairs right here, okay? Um, this chair is the kind of chair that I grew up with that was around the house. It served a function, and um, you sat in it. The function was you sit in it. And it looked like this. 
you know, and it, so this was an archetype to me, you know, what all chairs should look like. So then, you look at this chair, and I went, wow, you know, what is this? What is this? Oh, it's, it's different. It's made out of plastic, you know. You still sit in it, but it's made out of plastic, and it's all streamlined, as opposed to this chair, which is wooden, and all chairs look like this. Here's a plastic version. So, my question was, looking at this plastic chair, or princess phone, which I don't have to show you, was, as a six-year-old boy, all of a sudden, I said, where did this chair come from if it didn't exist forever? This is what I'm thinking in my head. Somebody had to make this chair, you know? So I asked my parents, I said, where does this chair come from? You know, I thought it was just here forever. And they, they were both scientists, but they didn't have a good explanation. You know, they just thought it was a silly question. And they said, well, you know, it was made by a machine, you know. And I said, okay, so it was made by a machine. Was it the same machine that made that chair? And they said, no, no, it's a different machine. You know, they said, they said oh, some man made that chair because it was made out of wood, I guess was their explanation that some guy made that. But since this is plastic, it was made by a machine. And so what I was interested in was I didn't really accept the idea that this was made by a machine because I said in my head, somebody made that chair and somebody must have made that chair, like the first one. Then a machine can make it after that. And that's what I'm still interested in today, making the first one of something. You know, even though it already exists, I'm not trying to be original, I'm not trying to invent anything new. I'm trying to get at the nature of what the thing is, my interpretation of what this thing is. And you can call it what you want. I mean, hopefully you'll be able to recognize it for what it is. Like, that's an egg, okay? But it's not an egg, you know? It wasn't made by a chicken, doesn't serve the same purpose, and I made that. It looks like it was made by a machine, but it was made by me. And maybe after I make the first one, then a machine can make more of them. But I'm making the first one.